Hey guys, so today I want to talk about the Chrysler 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 engine, found in over 25 vehicles across the Fiat Chrysler lineup, beginning with 2011 models and continuing to the present day. It's massively successful as it had its 10 millionth engine produced in February of 2019 at the Trenton Engine Complex plant in Michigan. The 3.6 liter Pentastar was also on Ward's 10 best engines list from 2011 to 2013, and then again from 2017 to 2020. Customers love the great fuel economy, smooth operations, and durability. Now that's a lot of engines sold, but all engines are prone to problems, especially when that many get produced. So today we're not here to talk about the success of the Pentastar, but rather some of the fatal flaws that have damaged so many of these engines. So first we will look at the specs of this 3.6, and then look at the major flaws, including what they are, which vehicles they affect, and how to possibly prevent them or fix the issue. So let's begin. So the Chrysler Pentastar engine family was introduced at the 2009 New York Auto Show with plans to use it for the 2011 model production year across various Chrysler, Jeep, and Dodge vehicles. Originally Chrysler had wanted to use the name Phoenix, but there were trademark conflicts and the Pentastar name was used instead, which of course throws it back to the five-point star emblem of the old Chrysler Corporation. This is a series of aluminum dual overhead cam 24 valve gasoline V6 engines that allowed for the use of E85 flex fuel or 87 octane fuel, featuring variable valve timing and also supporting potential cylinder deactivation technology in the future. The Pentastar V6 was a very big deal for Chrysler as it replaced seven types of V6 engines and today it's found in half of all the Chrysler vehicles sold. There are three major variations of the Pentastar, each with slightly different displacement and output. So the 3 liter has 230 horsepower and 210 pound-feet of torque, found in the 2014 and up Jeep Wrangler, Jeep Grand Cherokee, and Chrysler 300C in China and Russia. The 3.2 liter has 271 horsepower and 239 pound-feet of torque, found in the 2014 and up Jeep Cherokee. And of course the 3.6 liter has between 275 to 305 horsepower and 251 to 268 pound-feet of torque, and that's found in over 20 models worldwide including the Chrysler 200, 300, Dodge Charger, Challenger, Avenger, Durango, Lancia Tama, Ram 1500, and more. So now we'll go over some engine specs. If you don't want to listen to this, you can obviously skip to the flaws section of the video. But these engines do have an open deck design with four oil return holes below the head bolt holes, and this makes manufacturing cheaper at the cost of cylinder support. The bore is 96mm and the stroke is 83mm, and the block is made of high pressure die cast aluminum with sand cast aluminum cylinder heads and pistons with low friction rings and forged steel connecting rods. The engine features high flow intake and exhaust ports alongside dual independent cam phasing that's used on all the four camshafts that are placed very closely together. This allows for optimal volumetric and combustion efficiency over the full speed and load range, and that results in a nice flat torque curve where 90% of the maximum torque is achieved in the range of 1,800 to 6,350 RPM. The intake valve is a single piece design that's made of forged heat resistant stainless steel, while the exhaust valves are two pieces with a forged steel head that's welded onto the stem. The timing drive uses four chains, one that drives the oil pump and three that drive the camshaft. The cylinder heads are made of T7 heat treated aluminum with integrated exhaust manifolds. The valve train uses roller rocker arms with hydraulic lifters, and the valves have pressed in powdered metal guides which are not serviceable. The induction is handled through a multi-point port fuel injection system, and there's also a lightweight composite intake manifold. These 60 degree engines of course replace some of the older Chrysler V6s, the 3.5 liter and 3.7 liter to name a few. The 3.6 liter is more compact and lightweight than those two engines, 94 millimeters shorter than the 3.7, and 34 millimeters shorter than the 3.5, with a total length of 503 millimeters. It's also 94 pounds lighter than the 3.7 liter, and 42 pounds lighter than the 3.5 liter. Another thing improved was the power output, a significant increase of 42 horsepower over the 3.5 liters that are found in the LX models, and up to a whopping 80 horsepower gain over the Jeep 3.7 liter. 2016 also saw an updated version of the 3.6 liter engine that was released for various models with two-stage variable valve lift, or VVL, a cooled EGR, new intake manifold, fuel injectors and ignition coils, and upgrades to the VVT system. These upgrades make things a lot more efficient, but did cause the engine to lose the flex fuel capability. Just designing the Pentastar V6 took 45,000 hours of computer analysis, and once it was put together, FCA did 12 million miles of engine use on the dynos, 
followed by vehicle testing of 4 million miles. So despite all of these hours of testing and engineering, the Pentastar still suffered from several flaws that we will now go over. Those include head cylinder failure, rocker arm problems, and cooling system issues. So let's have a look. First up is the cylinder head failure. This is definitely the most severe flaw that affected the Pentastar engines. However, it was mostly an issue on the early 2011 to 2013 models. Just another example of why you shouldn't buy a first or second model year car. But it did affect later models as well, just to a lesser degree as the problem was revised. The issue would be cylinder head failures on the left bank containing the number two cylinder. The problem starts with a ticking noise and check engine light, which can then escalate to the cylinder dropping compression, which then results in misfires, stalling, and loss of power, though the engine will still continue to operate. The failures were caused by excessive wear, overheating of the valve seats on cylinder 2, or early detonation that causes the ticking, caused by low quality, low octane gas. Now this was a pretty significant issue as Chrysler estimated it affected around 0.5 to 1% of all vehicles sold in the US with the Pentastar from 2011 to 2013. So that amounts to many engines as the various models they were found in sold millions of units cumulatively. This issue primarily affected the Jeep Wrangler, Dodge Journey, Chrysler Town & Country, and Dodge Grand Caravan, but it could also affect some of the other models as well. For this issue, there was never a recall, but owners of Pentastar vehicles continued reporting issues and filing complaints with the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, and Chrysler would end up extending the 3.6 liter warranty for 10 years or 150,000 miles for this left cylinder head on 2011, 2012, and some 2013 models. They also made a cylinder head replacement that was more robust with hardened valve guides and seats and fitted this all into the Pentastar engines from mid-2013 and up. It was such a widespread problem that Chrysler experienced a high demand for the replacements, as of course they had not anticipated replacing this many cylinder heads. In July of 2012, dealerships across the US were reporting an average of 500 vehicles with this cylinder head issue showing up per week, so it took a lot of time to get parts to fix all of them. Unfortunately, this issue is still plaguing other Pentastar vehicles from 2014, 2015, and even past that. In fact, there was a Chrysler Pentastar Tick class action lawsuit that was filed in March of 2020 in the US District Court for the District of Montana that alleges that certain vehicles were excluded from the Chrysler Extended Warranty for the V6 engines. The problem is that any owners of any vehicle produced past 2013, not on Chrysler's VIN repair list for whatever reason, or vehicles that were affected past 150,000 miles, all had to be fixed out of pocket, and it's a pretty expensive repair costing thousands of dollars. Chrysler also denied warranty coverage to many owners due to external factors, owner misuse, or just because the warranty periods expired. So this class action lawsuit includes all consumers who purchased or leased 2012 to 2018 Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram vehicles that were equipped with the 3.6 liter engines, and also which were excluded from Chrysler's extended warranty. So this suggests that the cylinder head issue could still be a big problem. And if you don't believe that, then why were the revised cylinder heads still on national back order as of March 5th, 2020? If you are looking to possibly prevent the issue, the only thing I can say is that Chrysler believes that running higher quality, higher octane gas could prevent the early detonation and therefore the problem. So you might want to try using 89 or 91 grade gas at the pump. This next problem is pretty similar to the first, but it's not so detrimental and there's no extended warranty for it. Rocker arms are located in the cylinder head and there were issues with rocker arm roller bearings that had missing or worn needle bearings or collapsed lash adjusters. Common symptoms include engine ticking from the upper part of the engine and engine trouble codes for cylinder misfires. Again, this affected earlier Pentastar vehicles from 2011 until 2014, but there are reports of newer vehicles also getting the issue. Chrysler issued a service bulletin for this problem, with the fix being to replace all the rocker arms with the latest part, but it does mean you'll be paying out of pocket for it, again a pretty expensive fix. The final flaw today that affects the 3.6 liter Pentastar would be various cooling system issues. Many owners have complained about clogged up radiators and the need to constantly replace water pumps, thermostats, and oil pumps within the vehicle. Other related parts could also fail, like the heater core and the oil cooler. Common symptoms include an overheating engine, heating or air conditioning problems, coolant leaks, and engine trouble codes. Of course, if the vehicle is overheating, that would indicate an issue with the cooling system, meaning that the coolant is not properly flowing through the engine, and you've got a water pump or radiator problem. Or you might also find that the heating and AC aren't working as they should normally. The problem stems from FCA manufacturing. So as we briefly mentioned earlier, the V6 Pentastar heads are made using sand casting methods. 
Everything is supposed to be clean before the cylinder head is installed, but if any deposits or residue of sand remain from the casting process, it can circulate inside the engine and cooling systems, potentially clogging the radiator and oil cooling system, and that would lead to the failing parts. So this is another known issue from Chrysler, but unfortunately not even the extended warranty will cover the repairs if the sand was the problem, as Chrysler argues that it could have been natural wear and tear. The fix is simply to replace whatever parts break. There have even been lawsuits filed over this issue as well. So finally, that's the end of this video on the flaws of the 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 engine. We've covered a lot and I've tried to break it down as best as I could. What do you guys think about the flaws I've described? And for those of you with one of these, what have you experienced? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. But aside from these flaws, it is a pretty good and reliable engine. So thanks for watching, make sure to like and subscribe for more Mopar content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.